Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kamal Chilaka, a photographer based in Vancouver, in beautiful British Columbia. Today I'm sharing my initial impressions of Luminar Neo version 1.22, the AI-powered photo editing software from the Skylum. Before that, let me tell you a little bit about myself and my photography journey. For over 20 years, my journey with photography has been a quest to capture the perfect dance between light and landscape. Every video invites you to see the world through a new lens. So when uh, Skylum reached out to me, so if I'd like to try their new AI-powered photo editing software, Limna Neo, I was definitely interested. I saw this as an opportunity to explore a different approach to handling my high-resolution images. Getting started with Limna Neo was a breeze. Downloading and setting up Limna Neo for first-time use was simple enough. They do have a couple of different pricing plans, which I'll address later on in the video. After downloading the app and installing it on my M1 MacBook Pro, I used the key Skylar sent me to activate the app and I was good to go. Creating and setting up a new catalog is simple and intuitive if you already have some experience using software like Lightroom. I was able to quickly add either single images or entire folders to my new catalog and start working on the images I wanted to edit. One thing that really helped me get up speed with Neo was exploring the sample images that come bundled with the software. These aren't just random photos, they're carefully selected to showcase different editing scenarios and capabilities and make getting familiar with Lumina Neo a breeze. This is especially valuable when you're transitioning from another editing software and want to understand Neo's approach to photo enhancement. After having spent some time with Neo, here are some of the features that really uh, caught my eye and impressed me. One is presets. Also, I'm not a big fan of presets and usually prefer to do my own custom editing and very occasionally use the presets built into Lightroom. In Neo, I found that the prominent position of the presets tab suggested I should try them out and I was pleasantly surprised. Although the presets in the default setting can be a little too strong, they set up 100% strength as default, they can be tweaked to your liking and I found them to be a quick way to get through some routine part of the editing workflow like dehazing and contrast and saturation with just one slide up. I particularly found myself using the long exposure preset which works well with a wide variety of images. The second AI powered feature that really impressed me was the focus stacking feature. The focus stacking feature was simple and intuitive to use. All I had to do was drag a set of focus stacked images to the focus stacking sub window and Neo did the rest. And I was pretty impressed by the results. Another tool that Neo provides is HDR Merge. It works similar to the focus stacking feature. You just drag your bracketed images into the HDR Merge sub window and Neo does the rest. And you, you can further tweak it in uh, using the custom editing tools to your liking. Lumina Neo has simply too many tools to cover in this short video, but I highly urge you to check it out for yourself you can probably download uh, the trial version and uh, try out the different tools for yourself. Now I'll take you through how Neo's interface works and how easy it is to edit images using Neo. Now that I've given you an introduction to Lumina Neo and also explained some of the features that impressed me straight off the bat, oh, I, what I would like to do is Lumina Neo's interface and also take you through some live edits, a few of my images which is shot over the last few months. And then uh, that will be followed by my conclusion on uh, my initial impressions about Lumina Neo. So let's go. So when you open up Neo for the first time, you're going to be greeted by uh, this screen. Uh, Lumina has done is very smartly they create tutorial by way of giving sample images showing before and after the effect of the edits being done. So when you click on one of the sample images, so when you open up the image, you will find suggestions on how you can edit the image and try out different features in Lumina Neo. So I highly recommend doing that because it really helped me get familiar with uh, Neo's interface and uh, tools. Let's try this particular feature basically says use essential controls. And when you click on that, you get, it automatically opens, goes to the essentials tab within Neo and opens up the developed tools, similar to what you would find in Lightroom. And you can go about making some adjustments and that's going to reflect in these sample images. 
So for example, I would like to probably bring down the highlights a little, maybe increase contrast, uh, maybe you know, exposure as well, and open up shadows a little. But more than that, I think this image, what it really needs is some sharpening. So you can see here, there's already a suggestion to recover details from misfocus. Let's try that. It opens up the super sharp tool. So that's one of the tools that Neo provides for you to recover images which are out of slightly out of focus. Let's try that now. So you can either choose universal motion blur. So I feel this is a case of motion blur. And let's try the low setting first. Not happy with that yet. Let's try the middle setting. Hmm. And let's try the universal setting. And there you can see Luna done a good job of removing that blur and bringing objects into focus. What I'm going to do is now open up some of my images and take you through some basic edits. I've already created a few albums here uh, from my images so that's just easy to access the images and you don't have to waste your time during the video. Let's go to one of the images where I just want to show you how you can use presets and essential edits within Luminar Neo. Here's an image with a shot in the Palouse. So in this image, yeah, I just want to do some basic edits. Let's start with presets. So go, let's go to easy landscape preset. And if you click on this, you can actually fine tune the extent of, so this is the image, the raw image. And this is with the easy landscape preset. Pretty impressed because it's done many of the things that I would typically do uh, using the basic edit, uh, the essential editing tools. Yeah, I think actually in this particular case, I actually like edits. And now let's go on to fine tuning it using the essential edit tool. What would I like to do in this image? Actually pretty happy with the presets itself, but what I would probably like to do, crop in on a particular part of the image. So let's go to, right here let's focus on this particular part of the image this is a high resolution image so i have a lot of resolution to play around with and crop in and let's apply the crop and at this point i think what i need to do is uh, go to the details i like that let's also try the super sharp has increased sharpness so really very little to do at this point yeah color maybe i could go and tweak saturation and vibrance and that's it so let's try out the focus stacking feature so i've already go to these pre-selected focus stacked images that i have I'm going to select all of them and all you need to do is drag and drop them into this focus stacking sub window and once they're loaded hit stack so just waiting for neo to process those high resolution focus stacked images i think you have more than 12 of them and uh, takes a bit of time um, if you have uh, from about three to four minutes uh, before the image. So if it's just three images, set of three images, I find it just it does it in a few seconds. But if you have uh, like the high resolution images from my VG GFX 100 Mark II uh, on my M1 MacBook Pro, it takes about three to four minutes uh, for the focus stacking, uh, for you to put the focus stacking together. So. And now you have the focus stack image ready and Neo pretty much did all the adjustments on its own. It's brought all, so you can see the image is in sharp focus all the way from the foreground to the background. There's no ghosting. Did a pretty good job. I'm actually quite impressed by the focus stacking feature. So there's a lot more, a lot less steps. All you need to do uh, in most cases is to drag and drop the images into the focus tracking sub window and Neo does the rest. 
Okay, so now let's move on to another type of edit. Let's try and do a HDR merge. So we have these three images which I had shot with exposure bracketing in the Palus. So let's select these images and simply drag them into HDR merge sub window. And once that's done, just hit merge and merge the three images to create a HDR image. There you have the HDR image. And now I'm going to go on and do some, some other tools. Edit tools. So I'm going to use the erase functionality and just remove these mild markers. Start very quick and easy cleanup using the erase tool. And now what I want to do is go ahead and crop this image. Right now I feel this composition is a little unbalanced. So I'm gonna go and use a 16 to 9 crop. I think that's a nice cropping for the image. And now I'll go on and do some basic edits for the develop. Yeah, I'm happy with that basic edit and cropping. So that's one type of edit you can do. So there you had a few different edits within Lumina Neo. Uh, does really help uh, speed up the workflow compared to a traditional editing software like Lightroom. Uh, and a person, I feel there are some really good tools within Lumina Neo that help you speed up your workflow. That's very important because that means you can be a lot more productive and a lot more efficient with your workflow. Uh, right. I, for one, am definitely going to see myself using Lumina Neo as part of my editing workflow going into the future. So now let's move on to my conclusion on my initial impressions after using Lumina Neo for a few weeks. So as you saw from my live edits, it's pretty easy to use Neo to do the editing tasks that you would normally do in Lightroom or Photoshop. Now let me address a few commonly asked questions Uh, Lumina offers two different purchasing options. One, you can buy a one-time payment and a lifetime subscription to the software, or you can also alternatively get a 12-month subscription. And Lumina Neo by itself comes with all the basic editing tools that you would need to do most of your basic edits. But right now, Lumina is giving away over a hundred tools for free along with the purchase of the core software. So I highly recommend you guys to make your purchase now if you want to take advantage of the sale that's happening right now. I'll add links to the video descriptions so you can take advantage of the current sales that are going on. Luminar. Yes, Luminar works as a plugin with both Lightroom or as a filter in Photoshop. The workflow is pretty straightforward. You can send photos from Lightroom to Neo, make your AI powered adjustments, and the edited image automatically returns to Lightroom. The plugin maintains image quality and color profiles. You can choose whether to send files as PSD, TIFF, or JPEG, and specify color depth and space. One limitation though, layer-based edits in Neo can't be modified once the image returns to Lightroom. While they might look similar at first glance, they're quite different in architecture and capabilities. Neo uses a new engine that enables layer-based editing. Neo also provides more precise control over AI tools and masks, as Luminar AI focuses on template-based editing. Neo includes advanced features like removing power lines, adding sun rays, and relighting scenes. The mask refinement tools in Neo are more sophisticated, allowing for precise local adjustments. Oh well, Luminar AI might be faster for users who prefer one-click solutions. 
newest RAW engine supports files from over 150 cameras and applies automatic lens corrections based on embedded metadata. It preserves more highlight and shadow detail compared to JPEG processing. The software offers specific optimizations for popular brands like Sony, Canon, Nikon, and Fujifilm. Raw processing includes features like chromatic aberration, removal, lens distortion correction, and defringing. However, the raw development tools aren't as comprehensive as those found in Capture One or Lightroom, particularly in areas like color calibration and tethered shooting. The necessity of extension depends entirely on your photography needs. The core software includes essential tools for most editing tasks. Popular extensions are HDR Merge, Noiseless AI, and Focus Stacking. I'll put the recommended specifications up here on the screen for you guys to have a look at, and I'll also add them in the video description so that you can note them down uh, later if you're planning to get a new computer or you just want to decide whether the current computer that you have is ideal for running Neo or not. So in conclusion, after spending time with Lumina Neo, I have to say I'm generally impressed with how it handles high resolution files from cameras like my JPEG 100 Mark II. The AI powered features aren't just gimmicks, the practical tools that have helped me achieve the results I'm looking for in less time than in a traditional workflow. I especially like the focus stacking feature and also the generative erase tools which did a great job with my test images. Is it a complete replacement for Lightroom and Photoshop? It depends. As a standalone tool, you can do most of the work that you would need especially if you're a beginner or intermediate user. If you're an advanced user, I think Lumina Neo could work as a great plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop for specific tasks and some creative enhancements for which Neo is the better tool. I, for one, am definitely going to be using Lumina Neo as part of my workflow going into the future and alongside Lightroom and Photoshop. So those are my initial impressions. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to hear about your experiences with Lumina Neo in the comments below. But if there are specific features you'd like me to cover in more depth in future videos, I'll be glad to do that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.